I'm Mr. Mobile, and every time I do a video on an electric car, someone in the comments pops up to say, yeah, but the real future is in hydrogen cars. Well, maybe. But to drive a hydrogen car, you need to live near hydrogen fueling stations, and the closest one to my home in Boston is 2,547 miles away. So when I was in San Francisco last week, I thought, hey, why don't I call up Toyota and ask them to put me behind the wheel of the Mirai, the company's fuel cell vehicle, which is named after the Japanese word for future. And before I knew it, I was hurtling down the highway, leaving nothing behind me but water. Here's a look at how hydrogen cars work, why they're cool, and why I think they're probably not the future. The thing I was surprised to learn about hydrogen cars is that they're electric cars. The Mirai's wheels are turned by an electric motor, just like a Tesla or a Bolt EV. The difference is in how the power is created. Where a battery electric car gets its juice from a charging station or a plug in your house, a hydrogen car like the Mirai generates power using something called a fuel cell. The engineering behind this is complicated, but the concept is simple. See, the car pulls in air up front through what on an older car would have been a radiator grill, and a filter separates the oxygen, which is passed on to the fuel cells along with hydrogen from two tanks under the cabin. The hydrogen does not burn like gasoline does. Instead, it's chemically combined with the oxygen, and that chemical reaction produces electricity. The electricity is then fed into the small battery and the drive motor to get you moving. As different as it is under the hood, driving a fuel cell car feels much like driving any other car. In fact, the Mirai feels like a slightly sportier version of the Prius Prime I reviewed last year. And uh, I do mean slightly sportier. When I toggled power mode, I could get accelerations of 0 to 60 in 9 seconds. Hydrogen may be rocket fuel, but the Mirai isn't going to hit escape velocity anytime soon. Of course, it's not built for that. It's built for grocery runs and driving your kids to Little League games. And while this isn't a review video, my three days with the car gave me the impression that it would do that job just fine. Are your kids safe in a fuel cell car? It's a good question. When you're in the Mirai, you're literally sitting on top of two tanks of hydrogen, which are pressurized to 10,000 pounds per square inch. It doesn't sound terribly safe to put those into a 4,000 pound car flying down the freeway at 55 miles an hour, but Toyota has a good reputation for safety, and the fuel system bears that out. In a crash, the car's chassis is designed to redirect impact forces around the fuel tanks. The tanks themselves are carbon fiber reinforced polymer, and they were tested by an outside firm which filled them to operating pressure, then did things like drop two and a half ton weights on them. They just bounced off. The lab was able to penetrate the tank, but it had to shoot it with a 50 caliber bullet. You know, in the case of a similar sized breach in a crash, the hydrogen would escape over the course of 15 to 30 seconds, and yeah, it would be an ignition hazard. But then, so would gasoline. And gas sticks around a lot longer than hydrogen. We don't have a lot of data right now because there aren't a lot of these on the road, and thankfully even fewer of them have been in crashes. But after looking into how these have been built and tested, I didn't feel any less safe in a fuel cell car than in a conventional one. The best and worst of hydrogen cars can be found in the same place, the fueling station. On the positive side, you can top up your hydrogen tanks in a fuel cell car just as quickly as you can gas up your old Buick. I went from three quarters to full in under three minutes. That gave me enough time to press the H2O button on the dash and dump some of that nasty dihydrogen monoxide byproduct. <laughs> For those not in on lame science jokes, dihydrogen monoxide is water. That's the only exhaust this car produces. Hopping back in and getting back on the road with a full set of tanks, I'm good to go again for about 250 to 300 miles. The negative? Well, remember how I said the only place you can get one of these right now is in California? That small scale means hydrogen fuel is still quite expensive. That quarter tank I paid for cost me about 30 bucks. 
Extrapolating that, to fill up from empty at today's rates, you'd pay over $80. Toyota does take the sting out of it by giving you either $15,000 of free fuel or three years worth of it, whichever's cheaper. Plus, you do qualify for a $5,000 California state rebate and or an HOV sticker. But with an MSRP of over $58,000 for the Mirai, you're still shelling out a ton of money to get a car that only works in a small part of the country. Looking down the road, it would be exciting to see a hydrogen fueling infrastructure develop across the United States. I mean, these cars would outperform battery electrics in very cold climates, and yeah, it's definitely nice to be able to refuel in minutes instead of hours. Other countries that are more aggressively pursuing zero emissions targets will probably order more. Japan, in particular, is big into FCVs. Also, using hydrogen as a means of large-scale energy storage has some advocates. So a ways down the road, hydrogen may indeed be our collective energy future. But in the nearer term, here in the States, I think we'll continue to see battery electric cars maintain their momentum. They may refill more slowly, but it's a lot easier to find a charging station than a hydrogen one. And in the worst case, with an EV, you can usually find a wall plug to plug into. Also, EVs let you wake up with a full battery every day if you charge them in your garage every night. That's a lot easier than digging out a part of your yard to accommodate your own personal hydrogen fueling station. You get the idea. Still, I am fascinated by the technology that's driving fuel cell vehicles, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on them. Drop a comment below, especially if you own one of these things. And be sure you don't miss my coverage of electric cars from Tesla, Mercedes, Audi, and GM, among others. Subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.